All right, guys, welcome back. So we got the Z-Frame, freshly printed frame. Went to try and do a shooting video with the carbon fiber frame. The cutout here was not um, as deep as it needed to be. So it wasn't letting things move as freely. Just got done shooting this a little bit off camera before I started here. It shoots great. I'll uh, gas it up again and uh, shoot it shoot it for you guys since uh, you guys wanted a shooting video uh, a few explanations on the frame here is uh, we're we're threading into metal so you've got your square nuts in place throw your bolts through your on off your rail whatever you got thread into the square nuts and uh, we also have some clearance holes here on this side so if your square nuts get and you're taking everything off and your square nuts get stuck and you can't jiggle them out you always push something through there, an Allen, a small Allen key, a toothpick, whatever you got going on to poke through that hole that's open to get those square nuts out. We're also putting studs in here and here that are going to be metal. They're going to be hex studs that are going to go in there so that when you put your panel on and run your screws through, threading into metal once again. Minor changes that are going to happen, uh, we're going to fill in areas like this because there's no reason to try and clean out support material under here so this is going to end up coming up solid and uh, it's plastic so it's already light uh, any small amounts of plastic that I'm going to add are not going to add a great amount of of weight to it uh, sharp sharp edges here you know these are a bugger after printing to clean out nicely so what I'm going to do is do a little fatter radius there and fill it in with some structure. We're going to do some minor internal stuff. Since this is a purely mechanical frame, we're going to do some uh, structure inside and uh, get things a little more beefed up. Nothing's wrong with it right now, but uh, I just want to get some tweaks and, and more more areas filled up. Since this frame is is set up to be machined, this, this design, you can machine this out of aluminum and get the same effect in most of the areas here. The top and internals, there's a lot of things that I can add that a 3D printer can do that a machinist isn't going to do for a good price, I guess. Uh, like uh, 3D printers you can take and you can print a cylinder and put a void on the inside of it and not see it. Obviously you can't do that with a, a CNC machine when uh without drilling a hole first so there's certain that's a really kind of not really the greatest example but you kind of get the point so there's some areas that can be filled up here that i don't have to have void and still have clearances for this gun to shoot really well so as you might have noticed maybe not but we've got a safety in place and uh what we're looking at doing for the trigger for the trigger pin area and the safety area is I'm looking at making it more like the composite single trigger so that we have more beef more meat to mess with so that the trigger has a lot more uh, material holding itself together in there after shooting this I haven't had any cracks or anything with the trigger but uh, the the change in the design of the internals where the trigger sits inside here the reason for that is here in a little bit when I do the firing I'm going to show you I have the safety in the safety does its its thing it stops the trigger let's see if we can get the angle on this right and get it so you can see through the back so it stops the trigger it's not it's not touching the frame but as you can tell that's plastic it's flexing so let's take the, uh, just knocked into the camera there, let's take the safety off and then it compresses like it's supposed to, just like normal, all that. But when the safety's on, it's not going to stop the gun from firing right now. So what I'm looking at and what I don't ultimately want to do is taking the safety out of here and putting it behind the sear, like in your hyper frames, your well, any electronic frame that I've seen, um, 
yeah, they'll have the safety behind the sear. So you pop it in, the sear can move freely, and you pop it out, uh, the sear can't go anywhere. Uh, I want to keep to this and getting this to work and getting the trigger to get set up so that it is stopped by the safety. Uh, if you guys got any concerns or any suggestions or anything um, with the safety aspect of stuff, um, having the safety mechanism in there, if your thoughts, I don't really want to go to the route of not having one because that's not good at all. So, but having one that doesn't work, it's the same as not having one. So if you guys got any comments or anything you want to throw out there about it, shoot me a comment below, or if you guys see this on the forum or whatever, throw it up in the thread and, uh, we can go from there. Uh, there I've got some ideas in place that I'm going to look at, uh, with getting this to work, but, uh, might as well go and show you guys that it actually shoots and then show you that it actually shoots with the safety on. So, a little leak out the end and then my Ninja is leaking as well. So, let's see here. Let's get the angle on that right. A little chuff. And then it fires. It pulls real easy. Not getting any wear on the back of the trigger. Um, I've been shooting. I need to run some paint through this. I need to find an area. I live in town, so I can't really just shoot paintballs off the end of my driveway without having some issues happen. Uh, and we're getting kind of low on the tank here, so we'll finish off the shooting. But here, so this is with it, with the just like what we were just doing. This is with the safety off. And then we'll put the safety on. So with the safety off, it was nice and easy to pull, just as it should. With the safety on, it takes a little extra of the trigger to flex to shoot. We obviously don't want that, but that's what's happening. I just figured I'd explain it to you guys what's happening. So we'll get past that. We'll figure out how to get it going. Let me degas this. We'll figure out the trigger thing and the safety stuff. And uh, we'll see um, we'll see where we're at on that. Uh, so the trigger shoots, uh, the gun, the frame mounts up real good. We don't have any weird issues with the alignment of the valve and the body with this frame. Uh, it's flattened up. If you couldn't tell before, this was a AMMM rail, so it wasn't an RT rail, so it was still doing just fine, even though it didn't have that broader width at the bottom for the frame to flatten out. It still has plenty of flat surface. So you're not getting any misalignment of the valve in the body or the, the body itself. And with all that, of course, the screws are screwing through the plastic frame with the holes that are there up through the rail and into the valve. And then the same in the front of the grip, it's going up through the frame, up through the rail and threading into the body, just like any other frame that's made out there that's metal, composite, or such. Um, so that's, that's where it's at. You guys wanted to see the firing video. I brought up some concerns of what's going on. And uh, I'll keep you guys updated uh, when I get through with the safety and then the modification of the trigger. So we'll see where we're at in a little while on there. Um, with any video, if you want to be notified on anything, hit that bell. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, go ahead and hit that thumbs down. Uh, if you would like to see more videos, and see what I'm doing with other projects and stuff, uh, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, with anything else, thanks.